Hi guys, an earthquake in Islam has revealed cracks in the foundation. Now, in June 2020, a Muslim apologist tried to be super clever and challenged a scholar of Islam on his views concerning the claimed preservation of the Quran. Now, this is a claim the Quran makes to differentiate itself from the Bible, which has been updated frequently. We all know that. The claim is, though, that all recitations today in Islam are identical to what was recited 1,400 years ago, when the sentences were allegedly revealed over a time period of 23 years in the Arabian desert to a single source, an illiterate messenger slash warlord slash merchant. It's one of the most important and wildly propagated claims, one of the core elements brought up to bolster the uniqueness of the Quran and its supremacy over all other texts regarding gods. Except, well, reality has now caught up with it, and as is the case for all claims in the Quran so far, as soon as someone inspects a specific claim, it turns out to be a false claim. A mistake in the Quran. Now, anyone who has investigated these claims has been able to research and find sources to collect information from, because this is the 21st century after all. And every single time this was done, it turned out that the claim was wrong and could not be substantiated or verified. And now, of course, the same is true for the claim of a preserved, protected, unchanged Quran. Now this is a couple of, these, these are sentences that the Quran brings forward which show this, which is the source of why some Muslims make this claim. Now if you, if, if somebody becomes an expert in this and when investigating historical texts of Quran and other manuscripts, there are vast digital collections available to check consistency between them. And then, of course, all these kind of claims, they, they simply fail. And we find that almost every old Quran is different, riddled with mistakes, corrections, substitutions, and different contents, as soon as it is compared to the, the Hafs version, the 1924 Cairo version we have today. So confronted with this, Islamic apologists first admit, well, there are some dialects, some pronunciation differences. When pushed further by submitting more evidence, they admit there are minor differences in the words. So <laughs> it changes from no differences to, well, there are some, like the, the, the kirat, the, the differences, and then some aruf with different words altogether due to different consonants and vowel markings. So not only do you, well, if you go a little bit deeper, not only do you get the Hafs and the, the Wash versions, but also the Kalun, Duri, Kalaf, and, and all these different versions, and further variants. And these can be quite significant. Uh, but they don't change the contents that much. And this is actually correct. And this is why Islamic awareness makes these claims. That is actually correct. But next, the poor Muslim apologist needs to admit there are not just seven readings, but ten, and then by two different transmitters. So now we're already talking about something like 20 different versions of the Quran, and then eventually there's like 26, and then there are totally different ones, because Islamic scholars and historians mentioned centuries ago that there were versions from, from Ali, from Abu Bakr, and so on. So some of the Sahaba had their own private collections. And these were available to other people. So these were different Quran versions. And then apparently or allegedly, they were all burnt by Uthman, who then collected all of them and made one version out of it. Except today we have fragments, we have all sorts of pieces who are turning up all over the show with different contents. So this does not hold water. Then you have reports of a Quran with 120 chapters, not the standard 114 we have today. And then, I mean, this is quite obvious, the secondary literature itself mentions sentences on stoning and the hijab, which are missing today, which means there are something like 30, 40, or even hundreds of Quran variants. 
And going through history, we have thousands of texts with corrections where a word like Allah, for example, is missing and was later added to match today's version. But the final nail in the coffin was probably the recent interview with the highly respected conservative Islamic scholar, Dr. Yasir Ghati, a practicing Muslim. So what happened here and why do I call this an earthquake? Well, hmm. a, okay, a super clever Muslim made a private opinion by Dr. Ghadi public. And th this was in a an, in, an internal discussion group where only um, Islamic scholars were present. And Dr. Kadi himself calls this, this Dawaman guy an idiot for doing this, for making this like public. Idiots, they are idiots for but life. now we have Muhammad Hijab, yet another super clever Islam apologist. And he now pushes Dr. Kadi in an interview. And he, he said very clearly that this is a discussion behind closed doors, an internal discussion without a conclusion so far. And again, he demands an answer. So Dr. Kadi starts to explain the intricacies of the problem, only to be interrupted by this hijab guy with childish questions. And then finally, Dr. Kadi realizes that he made a mistake thinking this hijab was an educated Muslim and stops his what, what he calls complex line of thought and dumbs it down, saying a normal Muslim can't comprehend this and should accept the Quran as the word of God and not think about things and that scholars are doing the thinking for him. That's why you have a sentence in the Quran, in chapter 5, sentence 101, which tells Muslims to do exactly this. Dr. Ghadi is then further pushed by this foolish guy, Hijab, who doesn't really get what, what, what he's doing. And then Ghadi gets emotional and then states very openly that not only are normal Muslims exempt from this discussion, he also admits that non-Muslim scholars have reached a much higher level of understanding and knowledge Islamic scholars are not even aware of. And so now they are standing against the ropes, pants down, and have nothing in response. Nothing but faith, blind faith. And Dr. Yasir Kadi openly states this. He acknowledges, he admits it. He actually admits that there are holes in the standard narrative regarding the preservation of the Quran, and no adequate explanation for them exists, in spite of a thousand years of Islamic scholarship. That the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. The standard narrative does not answer some very pressing questions. In other words, the Quran is wrong. But he still claims he believes everything, even if it is not true. And this is the earthquake, where Muslims, all Muslims, not just apologists, they, a Muslim can no longer make the claim that the Quran is different from other scripture because it has not changed in 1400 years. This is now gone. It has been invalidated. And not only by non-Muslim academia, but Islamic scholarship conservative Islamic scholarship. Now Hijab was sufficiently embarrassed by this that he tried to hide this part of the interview later by simply cutting it out, applying the only means of defense a Muslim apologist like him has of censorship, just as he tried to hide this when Dr. J. Smith held up 26 different Quran versions in Speaker's Corner and this Hijab guy tried to call Muslims away, desperately trying to hide the truth and cover up reality. But now, to add insult to injury, scholars like Dr. Keith Small, who died recently, unfortunately, they have been shown to have an extensive library of Quran variants. And now, Dr. Dan Brubaker, an, an expert on this, he's come forward and revealed decades of research into old manuscripts with hundreds of Quran variants. Now, I, I work from photos that others have taken and I analyzed them. But Dr. Brubaker went and inspected the manuscripts himself. He was the one who picked them up and was able to scrutinize them using different lighting techniques and different spectrums like um, UV, uh, ultraviolet and infrared over many years, reading line by line 
taking notes and then as an expert comparing the different Quran variants and their contents word for word because he studied ancient Arabic. Now because of their stubborn refusal to accept reality, Muslim apologists are now caught with their pants down and nothing in response. Now with all the facts and physical evidence out on the open, they can't just repeat their mantra of no mistake in the Quran, no mistake in the Quran. But the fact is they have no adequate response, no explanation. And this a single mistake in the Quran, no matter how tiny that is accepted by Islam in general, is bound to cause a huge crisis due to a Muslim's unnaturally devout reverence for Muhammad and the Quran. And these will now have to be updated or even eliminated. So the earthquake this week in 2020 can really cause catastrophic long-term damage to Islam. It could significantly speed up the collapse of Islam we are witnessing today. Thanks for your time. See you next video. Bye.